just out of time, Tony. The TARDIS may undergo an adverse control effect. Is that bad? Bad? No. It's disastrous. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to an all-new episode of the Chronic Rift Podcast. It's your old pal, John S. Drew, here. It's April 15th, 2018, and I feel like, as we spoke last week uh, during our 2001 uh, Space Odyssey episode, that, you know, it, it seemed at, at first like it was a long time ago, and now here we are a week later, and yet it still seems like it just happened, like, moments ago, because... The weather hasn't changed. We got we got like a couple of days of beautiful weather, and I know my my. Let me bring him in here now, Julio Angel Ortiz, writer extraordinaire. Hey, Julio. Hey, how's it going? You Don? like to joke about the fact that, um, you know, I uh, I uh, what do you call it? Um, sometimes talk about this like it's the Weather Channel or something, but <laughs> you know, I I just find it so funny that. Um, uh, what do you call it? that? Here it is. Like we just had three beautiful days of weather, and now it's freezing again outside. Oh yeah, here it was. It was eighty three yesterday, and I looked at my weather app, and I was like, fifty two tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But nothing but, makes sense anymore. Nothing, nothing makes sense exactly. We should just roll with it here, I guess. But but talking of time, this is a good thing because today we're going to be taking a look at the very brief tenure of Mr. Colin Baker as the Sixth Doctor in the long-running Doctor Who television series. So, I... I, I, You know, I... I, And mostly what I want to get at, and we'll get into this in just a short time, is just how his tenure was so traumatic, dramatic, both. A little bit from column A, a little bit from column B. (laughs) A little bit from... Yeah, exactly. Uh, just want to say a quick good morning also to Helene and Wendelin who are joining us here on Facebook Live. Guys, 
you know, make sure you're getting in here. Leave your comments. We'll post them up here. And as we're having this discussion, also throw in your comments as well. Before we get started, though, I just really quickly want to bring something to the table here because and it, and it just caught my eye this morning as I take my sip from my unit mug uh, in honor of our Doctor Who episode here. I've been watching and enjoying the new Lost in Space television show uh, over on Netflix. And, you know, as with anything, the Internet has to have its share of those who complain about things. And that's fine. I mean, I there's certain things I can I can grant them. There's certain plot elements you're like going, really, really? Um, certain characters didn't click with me right away. I, it took me till about the third or fourth episode for the whole thing to gel with me in terms of really liking it and getting into it. Um, but... And we're going to be talking about it actually uh, beginning of June uh, about the series. But what got me this morning was I saw this comment and I, I just – as soon as I saw it, I was like, really? Really? This guy was complaining about the rabid feminism of the new Lost in Space. Uh, stop right there. <laughs> a, guy, a guy online complaining about rabid feminism. All right. We're done. We're done. We're done. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, come Sorry. on. And, 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 uh, I don't know. It, it, it kills me whenever you see this with, um, like, the uh, – what's the what's the word I'm looking for? The uh, agendas that they say some of these producers have. I mean, oh. God forbid we've got and, – and I just put my headphones on because I realize I don't want to make – want to make sure that there's no echo problem here because I forgot my other headphones. So I'm going to throw these ones on. God forbid. So I look like actually like a Cyberman right now with these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do actually. The silver. I, 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 <laughs> I could just do just, one of these now. Excellent. <laughs> you just need like the mat, like in the in the yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that'll be the next one. That'll be we'll, the we'll, next we'll, one. There you go. <laughs> That's the upgrade. <laughs> but it it killed me because he was upset about the fact that um, Maureen is so aggressive. To, to the point where she's always cutting John off and not letting him be a man. Um, oh. Yeah. Well, he's that guy. He's, <laughs> he's that, that guy. He's that guy, exactly. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The... <laughs> Just totally. I don't get it. It's, it's almost like as, as, as the discussion online and, 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 and really everywhere about equality, which shouldn't even be a discussion, a discussion at this point. It just should be you know, past tense at this point. Right. Um, yeah. It's amazing how some of these fans are, are, are ma- that are male, that are men. And I use that term loosely, um, are, are so easily, in, I don't know, intimidated. That's not even the right word. I don't know. They're so easily bothered right. for stuff that they shouldn't even be bothered about. I don't know. Sorry. Continue. The thing is, the thing is this, you know, um, that, what gets me is about it is is that the, the guy seems to miss the point, and I, I and I'm giving slight spoiler here in doing this, in that Maureen and John are separated, and Maureen <laughs> is the leader of the mission. It's not John. John's right. along, you know, for the protection. He's there, you know, and and that's fine. He's actually playing the 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 Don West role in this okay. in this the way they're playing it because Don West comes in but he's not exactly what you expect in the show either you know she's got and whatever their issues are because I'm only on episode 4 so I can't get into it entirely because they're talking about some letter or something and I don't know I, I will we'll see we'll see I don't want to like again I don't want to get too much into it but she's the leader of the mission she it, she and her husband are separated he hasn't been around for the family prior to this mission so don't you think she's entitled to be a little bit? I, I now I will say if they don't address it in the show, like you know, as far as their dialogue, then there's a problem with the plot. But right. to get there and say, "Hey, um, you know, we're we're uh, you know, rabid feminism," it's just. It, <laughs> it, and again, I know we're, you're always going to see this because this is the the internet allows everything it allows everything right. including the worst in people when it comes to stuff like this yeah you know remember when janeway you know a female captain on star trek oh and then you know anytime she acts a little commanding oh she's a she's a bitch oh she's <laughs> just that. sure dude okay <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's, it's astonishing 
astonishing how frail ma- masculinity can be in some people, some guys. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to keep that quote because I love that. How how astonishing masculinity is frail. I, I love that. Thank you. I'm keeping that. I hate it, bro. Especially when I'm dealing with Trump supporters. <laughs> oh, oh, we went there already. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes. Trump's been called. Okay. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This, no, you, this you don't apologize fun. to me, John. <laughs> I, well, no, I know I don't have to apologize to you. <laughs> I know. I know. So you I just, just lost some of your viewers. I know. <laughs> I, but I, I just had to bring this up. And, and you know, I'm definitely going to be touching on it when we do the episode on the whole series. After I've watched it all, uh, I, I think it's like the first weekend in June that we've got yeah. it planned. So, you know, make sure you stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for all the stuff we're going to be doing here on the Chronic Rift. But let's get into this now. Let's talk about uh, – Colin Baker, now, when I put out the call, I mean, you're a Doctor Who fan, but and but I've been trying to do these for a while, and when I put out the call the first time for Doctor Who, for Colin Baker, it was kind of quiet, and you said, okay, I'm in. When it comes to Colin Baker, do you remember, like, the first time your reaction watching him? Yeah, I was pretty young. I mean, I was, you know, probably like a lot of, of you know, fans here in, in the U.S., um, you know, I was what ten, twelve, watching it on PBS, and wow, I did not did not like him. Um, didn't like his aggressiveness. And again, as a kid, you know, he seemed aggressive. He seemed, you know, when when your first episode has you're strangling your companion, you know, <laughs> one that you you know at that age, you know, you know, Perry, like you, you like Perry, like she's nice enough or whatever, you know, but. No, it was, dude, it was rough. It was a rough start. Because, I, I mean, I like Davison. You know what I mean? I like the Fifth Doctor so much. And then he's such the opposite. And uh, it was a pretty, it was a pretty stark contrast uh, for, you know, the, the young kid in me to see. So your first episode, though, was um, uh, The Twin Dilemma. The Twin Dilemma. Mm-hmm. You saw the regeneration. See, that's interesting. Yeah. I, maybe that's part of it. For me, that why I never like got at all like a, a visceral reaction against him because okay. my first episode was Mark of the Ronnie. Oh, okay. All right, and he's we're what like that's two or three episodes in, three or four. I, I it's think like, I think like the fourth episode or yeah, story, fourth mm-hmm. story, right? Um, you know, and he's pretty well established uh, that. Um, you know, he's the doctor. I mean, yeah, he's acerbic and all, but I was mm. seeing already the Hartnell influences with Mark mm. of the Ronnie. Whereas with, um, with, with Twin Dilemma, yeah, I could see going in cold. You're like, what the hell? And then to top it off, it was just an interesting, uh, take on it. Let's introduce the doctor. Let's make him totally go against the type of what we've seen, you know, for most of the run of this show. And then let's put it at the end of a season. So they've got like an entire year to ruminate on this whole thing. Okay. Yeah. See, when I saw it, because of you know the way you know this, I don't know what not syndication, but the way it was you know over here, it was just you know it was already all the time it passed. So it was all you know you go right from Caves of Androzani, Twin Dilemma, and then right into the next story. So I didn't have you know that that time to kind of ruminate on it. It was oh okay oh. And then you just kept going. And I mean, he, 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 I don't say he got better. The, the kid in me, uh, I want to say accepted him more, but was more tolerant. Although it's like the cliche to bring up, but I did not care for the costume the whole time as a kid. Like I said, when I was watching it. Well, when you say as a kid, does that mean you're more forgiving now? A little bit. Um, but I think that has to do with looking at his performance differently mm-hmm. uh, as an adult and, and knowing what he's capable of and knowing, like, from from listening to the, the Big Finish audios. I mean, he's a good actor. I mean, you know, Colin Baker is a very solid, um, you know, doctor. I mean, just performance wise. And I think he, he, he's allowed a lot more nuance in it now or a lot, you know, than he was ever able to on TV. But I, I blame that on the production crew at the time, the, the people running the show. Well, that that's what I wanted to get into here because I, I don't know. I And it's sad to see whenever you see people talk about favorite doctors and what have you. And Colin Baker tends to get down on the lower 
end there. And I, I, to me, it's like I don't chalk that up to as much about him or even about his doctor because mm-hmm. I chalk it up more to, like you say, the production. I chalk it up more to the stories. I don't think many of his stories that he was given to work with um, were that good, but he made them yes. work as best he could. Yeah. Uh and, and I know this is going to – this is where I'm going to differ from uh, a lot of fans. I didn't like him with Perry. Really? Yeah. I felt Perry was better with Peter Davison. They'd started her with him. Um, and, and thank God they only did the one episode with, with – or the two episodes with her and him mm-hmm. together. You know, if they had actually established it a little bit longer, I really would have been annoyed. I just felt like – because with Peter Davison all along, Peter Davison was like the big brother doctor. The problem mm-hmm. was was that Adric didn't need a big brother. He needed a father. Tegan mm-hmm. was too, uh, you know, um, you know, strong. To need a big brother. And Nissa. Wait, you mean she was like a radical feminist? She was like a ra- okay. rabid feminist. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, she was strong. She, you know, she didn't know. Yeah, yeah. She didn't need a big brother figure. And Nissa was pretty much the doctor's equal in, in many respects, just a younger version of him. That's why he loved working with her so much. Uh, you know, so then along comes Perry, and it's like, okay, finally, you know, we can have that brother sister relationship. Um, right. You know, without it seeming creepy, because they kind of were, you know, of of a, a similar age, you know, in, in, in closeness to. I mean, Peter Davison may be what ten years older than her or something like that. But mm. and then you bring in Colin Baker, you know, and right. he's just so. I mean, and again, here I am. I'm going to come out and 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 go again. I liked Mel better with him. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be. Yeah, I I didn't. I, I can't even. <laughs> this is gonna just i i can't even say that i liked mel period period okay so it's see. hard for me to say and, and again nothing personal with the, the yeah yeah mel the whole we could probably do an episode about mel because like i just didn't care for her i probably did like her better with the sixth doctor than the seventh oh definitely no seventh doctor she was all wrong for yeah I, so but in general i wasn't a big fan of mel um, I actually liked the dynamic with Perry and the Sixth Doctor. I think that actually was probably one of the better aspects of his run. To me, that was kind of what anchored him. She anchored him as a as a character for you know as a good you know he's so you know bombastic and loud and and whatever. And she's kind of like his humanity when he's you know in the Twin Elmay talks about you know which actually I thought was in looking back was good. You know, he's like, I'm an alien. I'm not human. I don't have the same values. I don't have the same, like, you can't expect the same from me. And the dynamics seem to be set up where Perry is that human element. She is going to be that anchor for him. And so I think that was probably actually one of the best aspects of his run, those two together. Right. Uh, I I just, you know, it's funny because... (laughs) It's what? No, go ahead. We can disagree. I... You know what it is, you know, and in, in hearing you say that, okay, uh, maybe in Trial of the Time Lord by then I could see, because, mm-hmm. and again, this is again another problem with the production, and, and you can't lay this on Colin Baker, you can't even lay it on his character, because we get the one season, we get the one episode, and we, we go right. away, we get the one season, and during most of that you're like looking and, he, and there are times, and yeah, he's established I'm alien, which makes perfect sense and everything, and then... Mm-hmm. They're gone for 18 months. And when he comes yeah. back, he's, his hair's a little fairer. He, he's put on a little more weights. He seems a lot more comfortable and like, I'm glad to be back. So I'm a bit more agreeable about things. And Perry right. and him, I mean, right off the bat, when, when they start with the whole thing with, um, the, the first episode the, uh, from the trial of the time lord, when he's recounting the past adventure, which is, you know, still, from the looks of it, long enough in the future that, like, mm-hmm. time has passed between seasons, quite some time. You know? Right. So that you're like, I would have loved to have seen more then of her, dare I say it, humanizing him? Right. Yeah. You know? And I think, I think you kind of, I think you make a great point that, you know, you have an 18 month gap, all these production issues and questions at the time of if the show's going to come back. Right. And then you come back to trial of a like that's the what you come back with. Right. A long, overlong, in my opinion, mm-hmm. convoluted, in my opinion, story. Like 
Java Tom was not really is really not that great a story. I mean, and in, in, in terms of um, the concept of a whole over, but then again, it, it didn't work either. In my opinion, key to time, mm-hmm. it didn't work. Yeah. Well, what didn't you, I was going to say? What did you think about what? What did you think didn't work about Key to Time compared to Trial of the Time? Work? Well, because you've got this whole thing under an umbrella type thing. You know, Key to Time is we need to find the segments to the Key to Time T- uh, Trial of the Time Lord. Doctor's on trial, and here's the evidence. All right. If when you're doing a normal series and a normal season and you don't have that umbrella type thing, you can have your hits and misses. But when mm-hmm. you put those hits and misses under an umbrella like that, the misses really stand out like a sore thumb. And there are there are more misses in Trial of the Time Lord, I will give you that, than Key to Time. But I felt Key to Time had a lot of misfires as well. I And at that point, with, and not to get too far into it there, I That's was a- not a big fan of Douglas Adams script editing the series. I, I love Douglas Adams. I think he was a blasphemy, John. I know. You see, just, I, I, I tell you, I, I think. <laughs> and let's just cut it. Let's call it a day. <laughs> I think what also I think that the way they were structured, and again, not to go too far off key here. I didn't even mean to make that stupid pun. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I think the way they were structured. Key to Time was what five distinct stories that just had an overarching, you know, plot. Uh, or, or, or theme, whereas Trial of a Time Lord was a 14, you know, I think it was 14 part story. Right. So I think the story they were the structured helped Key to Time as opposed to, um, Trial of a Time Lord, which was, had, it was a great concept. Conceptually, it seemed like an overdue con- idea, right? Doctor put on trial for you. And it's just, I don't know, the execution was lacking, unfortunately. But again, production problems. I mean, didn't Robert Holmes pass away? Um, during production, he passed like he away. Finish. Yeah, he because he was supposed to finish up the the final two stories, and then it wound up with Pip and Jane Baker. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, and uh, and from what I call as well, I was like, you know, doing some research on this, and you know, John you know, Nathan Turner, J and T, and uh, Eric Sword. E- Eric Sword, yeah. Yes, yeah, Sword. So- 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 falling so- out. Is- I'm totally messed up his name, and I apologize if. Some minimal chance you're watching this, um, but you know, didn't they have a falling out too? I mean, there's just so many production problems again behind the scenes affecting the quality of the story. And again, I mean, stuff that's out of Colin Baker's control. Well, yeah, they had their falling out over how Doctor Who should be portrayed. Uh, Turner was turning it, turning it more and more into lighter and lighter fare. And meanwhile, he was always trying to push the envelope and be a little more darker, a little more grown up. Um, and, 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 and you can see it. There are, you know, plenty of, uh, examples like the, um, Vengeance on Varos in particular. Uh, mm. I still remember the first time, and I love Vengeance. It's probably one of my favorites out of the Colin Baker series just because of its commentary. It's almost like here's Doctor Who making fun of all the things that people say have going against it uh, by pointing out the violence and pointing out the, you know, the, the, the whole thing with ratings and stuff like that and how people, right. you know, come and go based on the, the will of the people and such. Um, and, and in particular, I remember the, the acid bath scene. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Um, it's funny when you were saying about the violence of what's my first thought was the two doctors. Hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I can't even talk about that episode <laughs> with my wife because, you know, it's like the one episode, like, she just like, gets, like, PTSD thinking about the the villain Shaka and he was uh, – his appetite, I should say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, but, I mean, but there you have the doctor. I mean, and I didn't feel bad for Shaka dying. But, I mean, you know, like, the violence of that episode, I was an uproar. Oh, you know. But, I mean, it's the times, too. It's the mid-'80s, right? So it's a different time from today. That well, stuff wouldn't even bat an eyelash today. I mean, shock I maybe not the way he died, but then there was also then that um, restaurant, not owner, but the maitre d' who just stabbed mm-hmm. in the midst of everything. And he was just such a likable character, you know, that, that things like that, the like, the acid bath scene from Vengeance on Varos, the whole, I mean, hell, in the end, just how gruesome it was that Perry dies in Trial of the Time Lord 
by having her consciousness, you know, taken away and, and the, uh, Sil, not Sil himself, but the other one of his race there, you know, has his right. brain transplant. I mean, that's horrific. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> I'm sorry, I was, uh, I'm just remembering the scene where, was it Brian Blessed comes in and like sees it and, no, and he like, <laughs> yes, fire. Yes. Anyway, so not to take away from the tragedy of the scene because it is, um, but, yeah, I mean, it was probably a little too dark too soon back then. But, I mean, I, I, would have pref- I preferred it to the lighter fare. But overall, it's, it's still the quality. You can make it as dark as you want, but if the writing and, and, and is, is not up to snuff, mm-hmm. then what good is it? Right, right. You know, speaking of, of the whole thing with the, um, you know, uh, that scene you were talking about there in particular with Brian Blessed and such – it leads up to actually what I think is, and I, and I know this sounds weird because it's so brief, but it is one of the best scenes in Colin Baker's entire run is when he stands up then after they fade away and he just looks and he's like, you kill Perry. Like even he's, we're like, we're not the only ones going, oh, oh crap. You know, right. he's there and he's like, and he knows it's like the Time Lords had a hand in it because they could have stepped in and saved her. They knew this was going on. He's like, you kill Perry. And then, you know, the, the, um, uh, the examiner, whatever her name is, the, I forget her name. Um, yeah, I forget her name too. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, we had to do this and stuff. And he's just sitting there and he's fuming. And that whole point is they're zooming in on him and he goes, and I have every intention to find out what exactly is going on. And it just, and it's like the end of the, the, to me, that was a high point for Colin Baker because then you really saw that he did care about Perry. Yes. And I, I think that. He had some some great moments in there. I mean, the whole you know, I believe it's the same speech. The whole speech about you know, time lords of society, uh, ten million years, and you know how civilized are we? Is basically what he's saying. I mean, that speech is fantastic. I mean, again, shows that Colin Baker as an actor could really deliver if provided the you know the right material. And 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 that's it. That's our argument. There is that the the right material. Now I have to wonder because um, you know you see these uh, conventions where they'll give them. You know, uh, uh, Matt Smith's speech, they'll give it to Sylvester McCoy, the one when he's, uh, before the, the end of his first season when all those ships are zooming around and stuff and he's oh. like, I am talk. They, they give them to different doctors and say, could, you know, can you, let's have your interpretation. I would love to see other people do that interpretation of Colin's speech there. Who would you, did you have one in mind like that you would like, like if you could, if you could line any, all of them up. And give them the, the you know who who would you give the, the speech to? Uh, my first, my very first one, uh, one of two would either be Peter Capaldi or Matt Smith. Okay, I could see them with that because sometimes, and God love him. I, I mean, I love David Tennant, but sometimes his rage just seems a little too forced. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I love Tennant. I mean, don't get me wrong, yeah, but I I I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But when, but when Matt Smith or or and in particular, I still remember that episode with the space whale. Uh, that was not forced. I mean, you know, call me the doctor, but or call me something else, but you can't call me the doctor anymore if I do this. Yeah, you know, and he was just so angry. You know, um, but but I would love, yeah, I would love to take that and, and go to a convention and walk up to, you know, one of the old doctors. You know, any of them. You know, Paul McGann. Paul McGann. I, now there you go, because you're a Paul McGann fan. You know, oh yeah. How how I, how how, how do you think he would deliver that? I think I think what's really interesting A, that would have been my pick. B, I think when you put it in the context of of how this how they wrote him into the time war, mm-hmm. um it actually would be a speech I could see him delivering, you know, early on. I mean, when you see him in the night of the doctor, um you know, he's so harried and he's so, you know, like looks exhausted from Try just trying to save and help who he can, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, and a, you know, in, in in the throes of a time war, you know, I think that'd be a speech he, I would see, I could see him delivering early on in the war, and I'd, that, that would be my pick. Hmm. He's fantastic. I love, I mean, I think Paul McGann's fantastic, you know, just in general. Right. I, you know, I want to get back to, because we brought it up before uh, talking about it. My first, uh, Colin Baker story, Mark of the Ronnie. And I see people who 
uh, disparage it. They find like the, the, the trees that come and, you know, push, I think it's Colin aside or Perry, one of them. I forget now. It's been a while. I, I didn't get a chance to rewatch that one, but I remember watching it and I honestly, God, I do think that, you know, sometimes the context is that, you know, if you, it's like if you're going to introduce people to Colin Baker, maybe you show them a later one first and then go work <laughs> your way back. Uh, because I saw it and I saw it at, and I can't remember which one it was, but it was at a New York City convention, science fiction yeah. convention. Um, Patrick Troughton and Peter Davison were there as the guests. Oh, and, nice. And I remember, though, they were like, oh, we got an exclusive. Come watch Mark of the Ronnie. See this new doctor, Colin Baker. So myself and, and, Three of my friends were in the room there watching it, and I was just floored by I, I thought how good Colin was as an actor. And, and, and what was weird was I didn't seem to like you know go what the hell was that with the costume? <laughs> Interesting. I, I don't know what it was. Do you think it was? And, and just to, to be clear, that was you said that was the first time you saw Colin Baker as the Doctor. That right? was the <laughs> that was the first time I, I saw him, and I would say I rank Mark of the Ronnie up there as one of my favorites, along like with Vengeance. On okay. Yeah. Do you think it was the location, like just this this the the scene? That's not scene. Do you think it was the, you know where you were at at the time, what you were doing at the convention, watching you know with, you know having Trout and like? Do you think that at all influenced like your environment at the time? You know, uh, and- it, it very well could. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely it very well could. I mean, it was a room packed full of people who had, you know, seen just pictures of Colin Baker prior to this in, in you know, magazines or whatever. Doctor Who, the comic book, the Marvel comic book was out at that time. Um, so that was where we were getting our, our Doctor Who news from was by okay. buying the, the comic book and stuff or, or, or if we, you know, got the magazine, um, the Marvel magazine. But, yeah, I mean, that very well could have had a hand in it. Um, maybe if I took a more critical eye now, <laughs> maybe, well, maybe I, I mean, wouldn't I'm be not as, yeah. trying to just diminish how you felt, you know, the experience. What was, do you remember what the reaction was of the other people there? Like the fans that were watching this with you? Do you remember? I, I don't, I don't even remember what my, my friends reactions were around me. I just remember, and I still have it vivid, like how much I loved, I love the Ronnie. I love the potential that they had, which I think then they killed with time yeah, the they, ruined. they ruined it you know mm-hmm. um because she wasn't the master and she kind of became the master in time <laughs> of the running right you know um i loved and- her character i loved the setting i mean because for the most part most of that was done outdoors yeah you know? okay it was it mm-hmm. was just i love the music that was you know because oftentimes doctor who music gets a, a little bit a classic does gets a little bit of ribbing and stuff i thought the music was well done and I liked, in fact, actually, the only thing I didn't like that I kept saying, you know, uh, other than it, it gave Ronnie a, a couple of times to say, you know, you, you two boys, you know, I didn't see the point of the master. Yeah, I, it almost seemed like they didn't want to, they didn't have enough confidence in having a female renegade time lord. We got to you know, send that out on training wheels. We're going to put the master in there. And then it just kind of, it's it was unnecessary and it, it it didn't serve the story in any positive way. Right. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. I think what's funny that you said about the Ronnie is that I look at Missy. Yeah. And that feels, you know, when, when they did that and I, and I loved, loved, you know, Missy as a character. Um, I'm like, that's the Ronnie done right. Like that's, you know, it's probably what they should have done if they had any nerve back then, right. you know what I mean? But, uh, so it makes me wonder why if we'll even see the Ronnie again in 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 the current series. But I don't know, that's a side, just quick side digression. <laughs> There's nothing wrong there with that. Um, but now, as far as you're concerned, what in terms of episodes? Because I'm, I'm telling you, Vengeance on Varos, Mark of the Ronnie. What stories stand out to you that worked? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about this. The one that sticks out to me. is Revelation of the Daleks. Okay. Um, which, it, what I thought was funny when we were doing the prep and was doing the prep for the show and, and, and kind of thinking back, you know, the, look at it, get my thoughts together. You look at different doctors and I can think, okay, if I think Tom Baker, obviously, or I think Peter Davison, or I think of even, you know, Sylvester McCoy, I think there's several stories that come to mind that I can clearly had an impact that I remember. And when I think of, you know, Colin Baker outside of 
trial of a time lord because it's so long. Of course, you're going to have, you know, <laughs> you're going to remember it, some part of it. Um, Revelation of the Alex is the one that really impacted me. Like, uh, you know, the whole quandary, if, again, if I remember correctly, at the beginning, you know, the doctor finds this, like, a statue or, you know, basically some, some mark or, you know, hey, I'm dead. Right. And uh, I actually, I found that idea, again, as a kid, was just like, mind blowing, you know, like, wait a minute, the doctor finds evidence that he's dead in the future and he's kind of having an existential crisis. Like, that was awesome. And then, you know, the Daleks, of course, you know, you like the Daleks and you like I, Davros, I thought was actually pretty good in the episode. Like, the whole concept, the, everything, you know, that episode is imagery and, and things that I remember the most from all the stories. Like, I, you know, Vengeance on Varos, not really, was not really a fan. Mm-hmm. Um, Twin Dilemma, you know, as far as, as you know, premier stories for a doctor was, you know, yeah. Like Castor Valva, again, fifth Doctor story. I can remember very, you know, really well, you know, moments in their hand impact. And, and what I remember from Twin Dilemma is he's him strangling Perry, you know, <laughs> and not to keep bringing that up or being, you know, because, but it's, it's, that's, it just shows you like the, when you, the first impressions that a story can make. Yeah. So Revelation Daleks is it for me and Trial of the Time Lord. And Trial of the Time Lord. Yeah. 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 Now, I, Revelation, I'll give you too. Yeah, and and that whole thing with the the statue, kind of, I guess, like maybe Moffat picked up on that with Trenzalore, you know, years later. Right. You know? Right. Um. But uh, yeah, the the thing with Revelation, and that, that's another one, Revelation, that to a certain extent has its share of violence. Mm. You know? I, yeah. The. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. No, I, I had nothing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had a thought, and then it was like gone, and I'm like, just but casually that, gonna that's all. Yeah. That's all Sayward's, you know, doing there. He was always trying to push that. I mean, remember, he was the one. I forget if he wrote Revelation, but he did do. Um, uh, what is that? Rem- no, Resurrection of the Do- the, the, the the Peter Davis one, Dipson? which had the huge body resurrection. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and then you had the Doctor. Himself pointing the weapon and telling he's going to execute, you know, Davros. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but as far as, and, and as far as I think, I think we can all agree. I think uh, the worst, the 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 lowest of the low, when when Colin Baker really was like, you, know, you felt bad for him. You're like, you, you're making him wear that costume, and he has to do this. Um, was time lash? Yeah. See. I can't even tell you one thing. I, I know, like, by name. I know I, I, I'm i pretty sure I saw it. Couldn't tell you one thing about it. I didn't rewatch it as part of, you know. Mm. I, I, I mean, I can remember H.G. Wells, and I can remember Paul Darrow's over-the-top performance um, as as <laughs> this leader type who just, I mean, right. uh, good Lord. And it's such a shame because he'd been in uh, John Pertwee's story many years before. Um, okay. Where he was just, he was just a soldier, but you know, it was just like straightforward, yes sir, no sir, you know, and, and it was uh, the Silurians, the their first appearance. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, Dawkins he played, but in this thing with Time Lash, it was just like, wow, wow. I mean, I, it's like we need ham. Where do we get it? Let's get Daryl because I mean, because he was hamming it up on Blake Seven after a while, but but it was good okay. ham. But it was good ham back then. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was. <laughs> Yeah, I just I, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm I'm feeling like I'm like leaving you out uh, here with uh, not contributing to this part. I I just don't. I know the story name, and I just nothing's coming to mind. Nothing, and I'm sure I saw it because I you know watched at that age, and they showed the episodes. Um, PBS showed them like all you know one after the other in, in chronological order. Nothing's coming to mind. I'm totally drawing a blank on Time Lash, other than the, the story title. Now, when you saw them, now that here's something that's curious too. Let's go. Let's go back in time to when you first saw them. Did you watch them episodically or in the omnibus edition? Episodically. If you're, if what you're, you're asking is, you know, because the way they aired them was, you know, you had the episode and you got the cliffhanger, mm-hmm. and then, you know, sometimes, um, if I remember correctly, they showed like two episodes in a row. So, you know, I'd get, I'd like be committed for like an hour, you know. Almost an, you know, an hour's worth of uh, time. But is that what you're asking? Cause yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Because yeah. that, that was the thing. When I first started watching Doctor Who, it was Tom Baker. And it mm. was 
episodically. But once he regenerated and they moved on, rather than having it on, it was four nights a week. It was Monday through Thursday, and it was on at 10 o'clock. They went to Friday nights at 9, and they just showed an omnibus movie every – so with Peter Davison on, all my Doctor Who experiences until I started buying the VHS tapes was – um Omnibus movies, which then makes it really painful when you're watching the two doctors as a movie. Uh, well, hey, it's like what two and a half hours long at that point. Yeah, yeah, you know. And the thing is, again, you know, you get to these things. It's like there's Sayward, and he's got his agenda. You've got. J and T, who didn't really want to be there anymore, but he still does have an agenda. He's like, for instance, the two doctors. They built a story around the fact that he wanted to go to Seville. He wanted to take the Doctor Who team to Seville. Let's have a story sur- surrounding it there because it's a beautiful countryside, and the BBC is willing to spend money on it. Let's all go for it. And they all had a great time. The cast. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean it was beautifully shot. I mean, you know, the, the it looked. I like the two doctors. Um, it was beautiful, you know, the, the villas and the, you know, the, the, the on, the on, um, totally drunk a blank on the word. On location filming really, I think, helped the episode, but yeah, I wish I had a, a gig like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, we need to do an episode of the Chronic Rift in Seville. Can we make that happen? <laughs> like, on, no? Okay. Well, try. It. There you go. We'll just, we'll all go to Seville. We'll, we'll have the camera with the, you know, the background. So the, cause people got to see it too. You know, if this was just an oh, audio yeah. podcast, it wouldn't be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, and then the thing is, after all that, after all we, you know, he goes through this Colin Baker. He's got these, these lackluster scripts a lot of times. He's put in these situations that are, you know, like you say, many people argue about the violence and such in the show. He's portrayed in a way that is aggressive, angry, um, mm-hmm. sometimes cowardly too, as we saw with the twin dilemma. Okay. You know, uh, and then they all just rested on his feet. Like, this is his fault. This isn't working. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, I wonder how much of that is, is fandom's perception. Do you know what I mean? Like, how fandom remembers him and, you know... Well, well, I don't, I don't even just mean in terms of, uh, you know, fandom. It's, I mean, even the BBC, because they went to Turner and said, oh, right. get they said rid they of him. Catch him. Yeah. You know. Yeah, well... Again, I mean, how much, you know, you, you, again, reading stories and stuff, you know, the, what, the controller for BBC at the time? Right. Apparently hated the I, show. Michael, Michael Grade. Yes. So, I mean, you know, it, it's easy to, to look at the star and say, we got to recast that guy. But then you recast him with Sylvester McCoy, who is a good doctor as of season two. But his first season was, oh, yeah. in my opinion. No, no, I agree. I agree. I mean, there's there's very few... Uh, moments in his first season that I can stand out and say, and the only sh- the only story I actually liked is Paradise Towers. Yeah, I say that's probably the most solid of uh, of, of I think what the four stories he did the first right. season. So yeah, yeah, but then it's like okay, let's you know, let's move him on. Now, mind you, out of all the men who played the Doctor up to that point, with possibly the exceptions of. John Pertwee and William Hartnell. He's out there. He is promoting that show. He's doing the conventions. He's doing the talk shows. He is promoting the hell out of this thing. He is yay team, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, let him go. And then they're surprised when he won't come back and do the regeneration scene. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. The way they treated him is, is you know, <laughs> you, it, it was ridiculous. The regeneration scene in itself is is actually pretty funny. You're throwing a wig on on Sylvester McCoy, and that was what you decided to do. Yeah. I mean, you, you, he he really is amazing that he even came back and did audios. Like he kept came back and 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 returned to the franchise. He was pretty treated pretty poorly. Uh, obviously, with him. He, but I think oh, in no, a sorry, way right. he's. You know, no, I'm sorry. No, he, I, I, I was going to say in a way I think. I'm sorry, there was a lag there for a moment, so I was I go ahead. Oh no no, you're fine. I was gonna say I think in the end though he, he he's more than redeemed himself. I mean, I don't know if we're probably gonna go into the audio dramas and the big finish stuff. Um but I think in the end he he got the last laugh. He got the last laugh, but it was just 
wow, you know, I I always felt that like because even after all was said and done, now you know, and, and many could argue, well, he did it for the money. You know, he went to the convention. He continued to promote the show. Mm-hmm. You know, he did com- continue because it's funny because I think about him and I also think about somebody else who had a bad turn with the production, Christopher Eccleston, and just uh-huh. how different the two handled their departures. Yeah, Eccleston, I mean, you can't, you did. And I've heard, I've, I've seen different things about Eccleston's departure, um, or rather, you know, some of it was, you know, the ones I heard was a director, like a particular director, uh, someone involved in production that he had an issue with. But uh, Eccleston, yeah, it seems like he just doesn't want to have anything to do with, yeah, it was, you know, good or whatever, but he doesn't want anything to do with it. And Colin, and he's, he's, Die hard, <laughs> you know. He's he's kept uh, he's he's worked on keeping his legacy alive. Yeah, I, now that's a good question. Do you think that's a that has a, a big part of it? Because there is a certain legacy that goes behind each doctor and how they're remembered and stuff. And maybe do you think that has something to do with like why? Because he was, I think he was even the first one to step up when Big Finish came forward and said, "Hey, we got the licenses." And he went, "Yeah, sure." I mean, mind you, that, that if I remember correctly, their very first one was all three. Uh, Davis yes. and Baker and, and McCoy, but still, I think he was the first one to sign on. Yeah, and I think, um, yeah, I think it would, it because I was, you know, I read a statistic like if if you took the, the amount of time his, you know, episodes he did, he came up to like a season and a half worth, which at the time, by far the shortest, you know, amount of screen time that a doctor had. Um, so yeah, I can see, you know. He can't do worse than what he got in terms of scripts, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Now, wh- why do you think? Because he- here we are now, and what Big Finish is well over ten years old now. Um, it's pushing twenty, I think. Is it pushing? Oh, jeez! Wow. Why is it though that Colin Baker works so well in the audio range? I think. I think probably. It's easy to say the writing, but I think probably what we've seen is a, is a much more, A, he's older, right? So even as an actor, he's had time to kind of re- reflect and look at his role and how he would act on, um, deliver it. Um, I think the quality the scripts and, and just by the nature of audio drama writing, right? It's just a very different, you know, performance that you're giving, you know, what you're giving of yourself, how you're delivering those things. Um, I just think it's a combination of, of how they develop the doctor, right? He's, you know, you look at, especially with other companions, um, that are on, he's a little more, a little more somber, a little more less bombastic. Um, it, it feels like a more natural evolution of the character, probably, an evolution of what we saw in Trial of the Time Lord, like we were saying, you know, many, you feel like there was some time that had passed, you know, he had been more humanized. Um, I feel like we get that with the big Finnish productions um, and his performance. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it, it absolutely does make sense. Um, and one thing I do happen to say I, I also appreciate it is that they did the story, and I, I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, um, leading up to his regeneration. Yeah, I haven't listened. It's funny you mentioned that because I don't want to spoilers or whatever, but I haven't seen, I haven't listened to that story. But I know there's like, I've read the novel that actually, you know, does the novel equivalent of that. Right. Um, and actually, I really enjoyed it. Um, so I'm going to have to actually pull out the audio for that. I, I'm going to look it up after we're done. Shift. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but wait, wait till, till, till we're done here. Yes, uh, I'm just going to buy it right now on bigfinish.com. Um, <laughs> sorry, continue. But now, and I got to say, because I, I don't know the timing of this and how it all worked, but is it possible or is it likely? Because again, maybe you don't know. I, I certainly don't. That um, Colin's work on these audio dramas also helped to increase his presence as a vocal person in general because now he's doing all those BBC uh, world documentary type things where he's the voiceover, you know, the narrator. Okay. Yeah. I would imagine. I mean, there's, he's, he's done a lot of the, I mean, yeah. almost 20 years, right? So he's done a lot of work for big finish mm-hmm. and 
you know, every one that I've listened to, and I haven't listened to all of them or, you know, but the ones that I've listened to have been fantastic. Um, so I can absolutely see that as, as, as boosting him career wise. Right. I, um, you know, it's funny though, because he's, he's done plenty of other audio work prior to getting involved with Big Finish. In fact, there is this fantastic, if you get a chance, if you haven't heard it, um, the BBC did basically, uh, there, there's the movie Independence Day where, okay. you know, aliens attack and stuff. So the BBC did their version of, Ind- it wasn't their version of Independence Day. It was Independence Day from the British perspective. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's like while the invasion's going on, this is what happened over in England. And what they did was the first half of it is done in the style of, uh, War of the Worlds. Interesting. Okay. And then, and then the second half is just straight story as they're dealing with the aliens and stuff. And Colin Baker plays a pilot in in the story, and he's really good. Okay. Yeah. And wait, this is actually in the Independence Day franchise. Like they actually did an uh, I guess story. Yeah, yeah. It's part. It's considered. It's, it's Independence Day UK. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is it? But is it canon? No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not going to start that debate. Yeah, don't, don't start <clears throat> that debate there. You know, and I, I would be re- very remiss as we're starting to run out of time here. I'd be very remiss since we're talking about Colin Baker in general, uh, because prior to um, him becoming the doctor, he also had a role in a Peter Davison story, which is what caught the attention of John Nathan Turner. Yeah, there was Arc of Infinity, right? That's right. He was, okay. He was um, the uh, uh, Gallifreyan High Guard there or something, the lead, the captain of the guard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it's funny because I saw Arc of Infinity after watching, seeing him as the doctor, and it really, as a kid, and it really threw me off because I was like, wait a minute, what's. And then, yeah, you know, it, I mean, but we've had other actors. We've had other, um, like Capaldi did that. Capaldi did that. Yep. 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 No, it just it, because it's interesting because there it is again that whole because in that he was uh, <clears throat> forceful he was I wouldn't say acerbic but he definitely was forceful uh, apparently that and then also uh, did you ever watch Blake Seven? No, no, uh, no, not to any degree <laughs> that I remember. Sorry, yeah, um, no of it, no of it. Okay, there, there is a fantastic third series uh, story called City on the Edge of the World. <laughs> not a <laughs> I've never heard that title doesn't sound remotely familiar. Keep going. Uh he plays Babin the Butcher, this psychotic killer uh who's okay. leading these guys. He need, he needs to break into this wall because apparently there's fabulous riches and wealth beyond it. So he uh abducts one of the main characters, Villa, this thief, and gets him to, you know, to to try and open the door but he only gives him one hour and he just has some of the best you know um lines and, and one particular to intimidate villa he's there going you know my mother yes i had a mother she ca- <laughs> she said to me babe and he pauses again she called me babe <laughs> I mean, like, you can picture him saying this even as yeah. a, i don't have the clip here but you can picture him as i'm saying it you know and he's like she said babe Live every hour as though, or live every hour as though it's your last. So he goes, "You've got one hour, Villa," <laughs> and he walks off. Wow, is is this because this is how little familiar I'm with with uh, little familiarity I have with uh, Blake Seven? Was this before his time on Doctor? I this imagine was, it is. This was well before his time. This was so it's a much younger Colin Baker, um, seventy eight, seventy nine. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but just, yeah, I mean, and, and that's what kills me because in the end, you know, you want to lay something on, on the feet. You want to talk about how people need to stop trashing. I, 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 this is, this is how I'm going to wrap this up. People need to stop trashing Colin Baker, need to stop putting him down at the bottom of lists when it comes to favorite doctors, needs to appreciate just how fantastic an actor he is, was Mm -hmm. in that role. How he made the best, and he really did try to elevate every, no matter how ridiculous, including in Time Lash, his arguments with H.G. Wells uh, as he's trying to steer the TARDIS towards its destination. There was this incredibly long, ridiculous scene with him and H.G. Wells. I still remember it. And you're just sitting there going, would you just get on with it? And he tries so desperately to make the scene flow and... It doesn't, 
but he tries. You know, um, because it's just, it's just way too long. You know, you could, but then again, that's the same thing with a lot of the stuff. And I think that's why I had the problem with him and Perry is just that, you know, especially in those early episodes, you know, everything would come to a grinding halt every time they fought in the TARDIS. Uh, yeah. But again, I, and that's the writing, right? That's the, right, exactly. The, yeah, that's where the script editor should have done it had a heavier hand, but whatever. Right, exactly. Well, that's, and this is where we come down to, you know, blame JNT, blame Eric Sawward, blame the BB, do not blame Colin Baker. Come to appreciate and go, you know, and I'm not the biggest fan of Big Finish. I'm saying that now because I think actually there's too much content coming out. That that, And I'm not saying that the, there's a problem with quality. I just mm-hmm. think it's a little bit much of a glut that it's like, all right, relax. Let's slow it down a little bit here. Is it, do you think <laughs> Is it, do you think they've been around so long producing doc, so much Doctor Who? I mean, but it over a period of time, I mean, like I said, almost 20 years. I mean, do you think it's that or do you think it's like the ranges? Like, you have the main range, and then you have the Companion Chronicles, and then you have short trips, and like, is yeah, that's, that? That's what I mean. It's, your it's issue? just the, it's the stretch of the range itself, not the length, longevity. God bless them for their longevity that they've managed to do this. And with the BBC's blessings, you know, that, that's fantastic. Um, and, oh, no, I meant just that they've had, they've been out so long, they've had that time to put out so much, like over. No, no, I mean the current whole thing of like, yeah, no, it's like, here's the Companion Chronicles, here's Unbound, here's, you know, Gallifrey, you know, um, you know, so I, 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 I I think that's what what gets me is it's just too much to, okay. and I'm I'm impressed with people who actually listen to everything they produce. God bless them. Because <laughs> I, I mean, just just by <laughs> cost and you know sheer volume, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, hey, it, it floats your boat. Um, really quick here because we've we've just got a couple of moments left here. Uh, Wendelin chimes in saying, you know how people hate Clara? I have a problem with Perry. I think it's her voice. <laughs> she, her and my wife are in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife is not a fan. Um, does not. And it's the, it's the accent. It's the, you know, it's the voice and the, the, the really fake American accent that just drives her, like, gets conniptions when she hears it. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, again, another thing to, you know, uh, hey, you know, let's have... Let's have more violence at Sawward. I want to be in Seville. J and T. I want an American. J. It's just. <laughs> and it's like, but but why do you want it? You know, it was all marketing. It was all, and it didn't serve the story, and it didn't serve Colin very well. No. Yeah. But like I said, I, I, I that was one of my um. That was like I said, she anchored him, and actually, you should. Recently, probably the, the most recent big finish I listened to was actually a Perry and Six Doctor audio mm-hmm. um, that actually they, they picked up after – not to give anything away. It, it takes place after that one scene in Trial of a Time Lord, so they like reunite. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's actually interesting to listen to them as older in the story, uh, you know, as reunited you know, friends and companions. Check it out, Masters of, um, Masters of the Earth, I think it's called. Okay, definitely will. It's a like, really solid story. All right. Well, cool. Um, as we're coming to the end of this episode of The Chronic Rift, Julio, how can people get in touch with you to continue this discussion? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at J-A-O Writer or jaowriter.com. All right. There you go. Julio, once again, thanks a lot for doing this. This was a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it was. Yeah. We uh, basically was one big, long, leave Colin Baker alone episode. And, and you want to know something? That's been my approach. Leave Colin Baker. Colin Baker is wonderful. That's it. Don't 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 mess with Colin <laughs> Baker. You want to go pick on somebody else. All right. <laughs> so, folks, that's going to do it until next week. Have a great week in which um, – we're going to be doing our in-review episode. We're back once again with a new in-review episode. Movies, television, music. We're back with music. So uh, we'll be getting into all that. Make sure you stay tuned for all the great things we've got coming down the line here on the Chronic Rift Network, including the release of our Spider-Man episode of the Public Access Show. That'll be released tomorrow morning. So until next time, folks, thank you so much for listening. Once again, Julio, take care. You too. Thanks.